this is Paul Marhi. This is Kenneth Gallant. And this is Chetan Patel. And we are all from TikTok Tom, and you're listening to True North Country uh, Comics Podcast. Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book creators and supporters. It's March 12th, 2021. I'm John Swinimer. If you want to drop me a line, you can contact me at john at truenorthcountrycomics.com. On this episode, I chat with the creators of TikTok Tom. The podcast is available on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. It's also available on on the True North Country Comics channel on YouTube, so I invite you to like and subscribe. TikTok Tom is a self-published comic book by a bunch of folks who love comics. TikTok Tom started out in 1992 as a Toronto mini-comic. Chetan Patel, the creator of the character, originally intended to produce just one issue that was given away free of charge to friends. But as it turned out, more people were interested than he thought. From its humble start, the character has grown in both scope and depth as artists were given free reign over their personal interpretations of the character. TikTok Tom has appeared as a nihilist and a super being, among other variations, while his trademark wielding goggles and ink black hair became the norm. During our conversation, Chetan Patel, Paul Marhew, and Kenneth Gallant discuss the origins of TikTok Tom and discuss their current plans for the character. Thank you all, gentlemen, for joining me this evening to talk about your project, TikTok Tom. So what I'd usually do to start off the interview is ask the creator about their first comic book. So I'm wondering if uh, you could each talk about the first comic book you remember reading. And maybe, Chetan, we'll, we'll start with you. First, very first comic book I remember reading was an adventure, um, DC Adventure Comics, and it was The Death of Batman. I remember buying it on the newsstand, and it was just because, you know what, watching Batman cartoons and all that stuff in the, uh, you know, 70s and 80s, seeing Batman die, it was powerful. Yeah, that's pretty significant. (laughs) How about you, Paul? What was your first comic book that you read? I think the first comic I actually read wasn't a comic, in quotes, for the uh, French book, Asterix and Obelix. I think I remember reading that when I was 9, 10, or 11. I'm not sure. That was my first comic. It was definitely not a superhero comic. Yeah, it's definitely influential. A lot of creators have mentioned that one for sure. How about you, Kenneth? What, do you remember what was your, your first comic book? Yeah, uh, for me, it was like a either Spider-Man or Avengers. That was the two big books at Marvel uh, that I got into at the time. Like, and even uh, Marvel Team Up. Those are the three three major comics I was reading as a kid. Uh, that I would also, like Shatan said, get off the newsstand. Great. Good stuff. Well, lots of good books there. But I'm wondering who or what influences your work today? So maybe I'll ask you, Chatan, to start first. You know what? Uh, still a good artist, George Perez. His work influences me. I, I've liked it since I was growing up. And up until now, he's still amazing. Yeah, I, I was at C2E2 when he was doing his retirement tour, uh, which is something, you know, it's a sad thing that you have to retire. But, man, he's done a lot of great work, that's for sure. And even as the recent stuff, it, it, he still holds up as a good artist. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How about you, Paul? Who influences your work today? I, I think that um, I think I still get a lot of influence from some of the old school guys, like, uh, you know, um, art, artist-wise, like John J. Muth and Bill Shankovitz. I I don't even know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but uh, he still influenced me a lot. You know, I I strive to be better as you know, than I am. <laughs> and I look to those people to, uh, you know, help me get there. Absolutely. And how about you, Kenneth? Who influences your work? First one on the list was always Bernie Wrightson. Uh, I gravitated toward the gritty style as I was really into horror growing up. So Wrightson was always my first influence. Uh, Richard Corbin was the other big influence that I loved. Unfortunately, both passed away recently, so yeah. that was a bit of a bummer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I would, as Paul just mentioned, Bill Sikavich, John J. Muth, Kent Williams. At that point in time, we were all entering college, mm-hmm. going to art school. So those those influences were, were front and center, at least for me. Cool. All great stuff. So as I said at the top, we're here to talk about your project, TikTok Tom. So uh, I'd like to open up and uh, ask one of you to describe it uh, and maybe talk about the origins of the project. Okay. Well, uh, Chetan, you should do that. 
Yeah, go for it, Chetan. So what happened was uh, three of us, we met at, at the Ontario College of Art. That's what it was called back then. We met in the first year, and uh, we started off a comic book called Cool Box, which was a 8.5 by 11 uh, photocopy comic. When, once that was completed, we worked on TikTok Tom. And again, it was a photocopy comic because, unfortunately, we couldn't afford printing. Printing was too expensive at that time. So we photocopied it, and we got myself, Paul, Ken, and a few other art students and said, you know what, let's get together, produce this comic. And what happened was in the cool box issue, we put a one-pager in, and that's when Ken convinced me, let's do a regular comic on that. And Ken, do you want to give some story on that? Yeah, sure. At one point, and this has always been like a running joke, Shatan actually said to me, do you want this character? Because I don't know what to do with it. And maybe you can actually, because I was writing more than drawing. So he was like, why don't you write some stories around it? And I thought, well, yeah, I could do that. But at the same time, I just saw this overall potential. And, you know, I was into like violent things, violent comics, industrial metal music and, and horror movies. So I thought, well, this could be the best opportunity possible to turn this into something where we could just just go the to town with, go nuts. So I said to Chetan, why don't we just do this together? Uh, we can invite everyone that we know to uh, work on it. And that was more or less the gist of how it started. And Chetan was like, yeah, okay, let's give it a shot. And we haven't actually looked back since. And this is like early 90s. Wow. Okay, cool. Was that an objective? You mentioned the Ontario College of Art. Was that something that did you all say, I want to get in the comic book business? Or was this just a lark at the time? Well, I did. I know a I was a huge comic book reader as a kid and, and getting into art school. Um, and I was, you know, hoarding over like John J. Muth and Kent Williams and books like that. Uh, Dark Knight Returns, the stuff that Grau was doing with Green Arrow. So for me, it was on my mind. I don't know about you guys, but for, for me, it was. No, well, for me, I, uh, well, I always wanted to get into comics. Uh, now, the sad part was when we got into college at that time, comics weren't really looked upon as art. Yeah, especially at the Ontario College of Art. When yeah. we started doing our comic, we got a lot of weird looks. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it's like as soon as you tell them you're doing comics, it's just like, you know, it's the lowest form of art, but it's not. And that's what we wanted to prove. Yeah, I guess that was a challenge. I, I know that there was a time they're saying, you know, uh, comics are for kids. I know for a long time there, it, it wasn't until Sandman came along and people realized, wait a second, there's an adult population who likes to read comics. And from then on, it took a lot yeah, of time, yeah. but certainly we got there, right? You know what, John? Actually, it's funny you mentioned Sandman because that was the book that I, like when anyone said something disparaging about comics, I would say read Sandman. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe you could walk me through the creative process. I know that you mentioned a lot of people who worked on this, but can you talk me through like like who came up with the outline and who came up with the thumbnails and, and how did you get to a finished product? So what would happen is we had a really loose creative process on our comics. Basically, we just told everyone, you know what, do whatever you want. As long as you have the main character, TikTok Tom, in the story, we don't care what you do. It was uh, loosely based and... To be honest, between uh, since we started in the early 90s to now, there's hundreds of versions of the character. So who is this character? How would you describe it to someone? Uh, basically, right now, I would say uh, a time-traveling uh, guy who likes to blow things up. At In the beginning, he was just an anarchist uh, mm -hmm. who just, you know, anti-hero who just wanted to blow things up. Then we expanded more onto him. We added on uh, that he could time-travel. And basically, uh, we just played around with that. And we, you know what, our set guidelines for any new creators, we just tell them, you know what, just go have fun with the character. Ah, oh, okay. So just so I get a better understanding, it's more of a anthology type of book where people can collaborate yeah. and, and get this one character yeah. that remains the steady throughout the entire, you know, storyline. That's it. And Ken described it best. Yeah, then there's, there's, it's it's yeah. our version of no, 2008. You got exactly right. 2000 AD. That's a British yeah, publication, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yes, that, it is. That's, yes. Yeah, that's exactly what I said to Shatan. 2000 AD, because I'm a huge Judge Dredd fan. Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, all those stories are done in a very short sequence, three, four pages, and then you move on to the next story. That's more or less what TikTok Tom essentially is in the oh, same okay. kind of format. 
would you describe the stories as social commentaries or is it just fun adventure? I would say fun adventure because, you know what, we just want to do old school, not old school, but just fun comics, really. Cool. You know, we're, we're influenced by things we grew up with. I grew up with, you know, a lot of old DC science fiction comics and right. superhero comics. And that's what I want to show. You know, I'm influenced by that. I just want to, you know, do fun stories, really. Sure, absolutely. Now, I think I was reading on the, on your website that you would distribute these at record stores. And I know those are unfortunately going by the wayside. How would people find out more about your book and where to buy it? They could go on to our website, uh, tiktoktom.com. We have all our books there and you could purchase our books there also in our shop. But mostly everything's on our website. Now, unfortunately, because, you know, um, COVID, everything else going on in with the way the market is, we don't have the books, not in too many stores right now. Mm -hmm. The main store we have right now is in Oshawa called Worlds Collide. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned COVID. Unfortunately, we're still in this lockdown phase. I don't think we're going to get to a trade show in the near future or a convention until maybe the fall, if we're lucky, perhaps the winter. But is that typically where you would uh, display the book and, and have an opportunity to sell it to folks? We have done conventions and everything, and to be honest, in the last little while, we have not because, I hate to say it, all of us ha are at an age where we have kids and family and other situations, so we haven't been able to do the comic uh, convention run not much as we'd like to in the recent times, but we'd love to get back into it. Sure. It is a big undertaking, that's for sure. We're not young anymore. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we've we've been sort of reminiscing about older times, so I uh, age does creep up on us all that's for sure no that's where the record store when we were young we used to go around queen street young street Bloor street mm -hmm. anywhere we went we'd ask them do you want to carry our book and they'd love to where now you know a lot of those stores even comic stores there's not that many comic stores around anymore i want to talk a bit about what's next i mean we've talked about tiktok tom and and you now have a color version that's published wondering what's next for everyone do you have uh, anything you'd like to talk about for upcoming projects uh, right now, we just finished our color book called So What. In uh, October, we have a deadline for our next color book called Dead Souls, which will be, hopefully, we have we have the same uh, creative teams coming up again, and we've added on some uh, new people also. So it's going to be, hopefully, more than uh, 60 pages this time. Very good. And this, again, will feature TikTok, Tom, as the focus? Yes. Oh, very good. Very good. Okay. Well, maybe we could talk a bit about where people can find you online to find out more about your projects and what you're each doing personally. Okay. For myself, uh, right now, tiktoktom.com. Uh, you can find all my work there and new material. We'll be updating people on that. And we also have a Patreon page where people can find us also. Patreon.com slash tiktoktom. Well, gentlemen, those are all the questions I have for you, but I'm wondering if there's something yeah. I didn't ask that you like to get across in this interview? Part local comics. You know, I mean, uh, we did this for the love of it, and, you know, we would love to uh, share stories with people. Yeah, we're all, like, lifelong friends. So we've known each other for, well, well, 30 years. Lots of kidding, lots of ribbing. But at the end of the day, we just, uh, we love doing this, and uh, the characters actually uh, maintained this longstanding tradition since art school and that's what i think is what, what i want people to know or take away from all this and bottom line yeah. is we're, we're just doing comics because we love comics thanks to jatan paul and kenneth for the chat you can discover more about tiktok tom on twitter at tiktok tom and online at tiktok tom.com tiktok tom can be found on patreon at patreon.com slash tiktok tom and thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics Podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to and like this podcast on Apple Podcasts. And please leave a good rating. Also check out the TrueNorthCountryComics.com website and follow along on Twitter at True North Comics. True North Country Comics is now on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to that video channel. Please send your feedback to John at TrueNorthCountryComics.com. Thanks again for listening, and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. Truth Country Comics podcast is copyright Truth Country Comics, copyright 2021.